Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, this is a new weekend for those of us in Nigeria. I say happy Democracy Day. You know, the government has set aside today, June 12th, to be the day we celebrate democracy. And as, as a people in this country, we use this opportunity to bless Nigeria. And we pray that God will cause us to indeed enjoy the government of his choice for us as a nation. Let God remember his covenants today and let him look down on Nigeria and bless us. Praise God. That's what you do with a day like this. Why do we fix days, you know, and, and, and you know, sometimes, you know, why do we always have... Listen. It's a day for you to remember as a child of God and pray. It doesn't matter who said it. Uh, uh, the rulers do said, are they, are they Christian? No, 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 no. Every day that I've been set aside, whether world this day, world this day, you as a believer, remember to pray. That's the, that's the, the purpose you choose for that day pray praise god so we bless nigeria and we declare that nigeria will fulfill god's purpose in the name of the lord jesus christ amen praise god before we go into today's broadcast can we make requests for our daily bread are you ready release your faith right now i told you last week or last week or two weeks ago how to release your faith mean what you say and believe that what you are about to say or request will surely come to pass. If you don't mean it, there's no point praying because it will not happen. But when you mean it and you know that as these words come out of my mouth, it will bring to pass what I have just said. God is going to grant it. And that's releasing your faith. So if you're ready to do that, join me right now and say, Father, I make demand for my daily bread. And today's portion is coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, we've been talking about entering God's rest. Very, very important topic. Very, very important topic. And, and when I tell you these things, sometimes, you know, I, I, I know a lot of God's children just don't pay attention to his word. And there is a, you know, sometimes when you sit down and just observe things, no matter how you play over on the front line where the gospel is concerned, it's important to also sit back sometimes and do a lot of thinking and ask yourself this question. This is one question I always ask myself. Are we progressing? as the church. Now I'm not talking about as a, as a um, unit church or as a denominational church, no. The, the whole body of Christ. Are we making progress? Now if we don't in the first place know the destination we are going, how would we know when we are making progress or, or that we're not making progress? How would we know? And there's lots, there's been lots of misconception about our destination. Some say our destination is heaven. Some say, oh, our destination is uh, whatever you can think about. But you see, you know, I was, I was um, fellowshipping with the Lord. And, <laughs> you know, sometimes the way we, the things we hear and the things we communicate with the Lord, it's, it's um it's something that makes us like uh, what are you talking about so i was communicating i was just fellowshipping with the lord and it, the thought crossed my heart now when god is talking to you um thoughts are coming to your heart now every time god ministers to you um john chapter uh, 15 tells us that he teaches us he says you are clean to the words that I have spoken unto you 
the teachings that I have discussed with you, John 15, 3, the Amplified Version, the teachings that I discuss with you, take note of that part, the teachings that I discuss with you. So we have those times where he comes and he teaches us. Now, this is not a man teaching or you watching a message or something. No, this is you and the Holy Spirit. And then he is teaching you stuff. And now when he's doing that to you, you are supposed to be increasing in knowledge. Now, that's how we increase in spiritual knowledge. I'm telling you the truth. That's how we increase. Now, these teachings can be fueled by several factors. It can be from what somebody said. It can be from... Now, that's why it's always good that you are in an anointed environment. What do I mean an anointed environment? Listening to anointed ministers of God listening to anointed music i get what i'm saying just be in that environment where where the words are flowing now it doesn't matter if the person is so knowledgeable or not now sometimes even from the the allow me to use this word error somebody speaks knowledge can come to you i've had that many times you know i'm listening to somebody a person who just says something i'm like huh i know this thing seems off lord what's the meaning of this thing and then he opens up new knowledge to me. Now, I wouldn't have probed if I had not listened to that person. See that now? So now that's why you, you should be conscious to be listening to. Now, it's not every time an anointed man is accurate when it comes to knowledge. I, I need you to understand that. An anointed man can make mistakes when knowledge is... It happens to every one of us. And this is how it happens. Sometimes your mind is locked in a particular knowledge that you received maybe 10, 20 years ago. And you've not updated that knowledge. Say update. Yes, you, you update everything you have known. It's important you update them, praise God. Yes, because you see what, 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 what I mean by updating. <coughs> there are certain conditions that made you to know that thing. See? And... At the time you know that your level of understanding was somewhere. Now, over time, your level of understanding increases. And if your level of understanding has increased, then you need to check the things you called knowledge before now. And when you are checking, then you begin to discover errors in those knowledge because your understanding have increased. So what was right five years ago, ten years ago, you will look at it and say, no, this cannot be right. Because, you see, you have discovered other things that questions that knowledge. And then you begin to look at it again. And they say, ah, ah, something happens to us. I could have preached this. I could have said this. <laughs> it's good. Now, you see, the, the, the more you, you find out that you are beginning to minimize those changes then you know that your level of truth and understanding is really being straightened out see that you know so now i was fellowshipping with the lord I'm, i i said that so that you you can be a believer or a pastor or a preacher especially if you're a teacher of god's word oh if you're a teacher i mean you've got the anointing to teach you have an assignment to do this as frequently as possible praise god so so now, so I was fellowshipping with the Lord and, and he was sharing some things with me. And then a question came up in my heart and I asked him, I said, but this is what Paul said. And then the Lord, now, now, there are things he said to me before that even when I asked that question, I asked it with caution. So, and then he said some things to me and then, I said to myself, I said, wow. Now, when I say this now, some people get edgy. I said, wow. Isn't it amazing that one day, <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm, I'm, I'm wondering the reaction you're going to get when you hear this. So I said, isn't it amazing that one day, this is what I said to myself based on our communication. I don't bother about our communication. It's you would, as I teach, those things will come out somehow. So I said, isn't it amazing that one day we are going to meet someone like Apostle Paul? 
And then we'll realize that we're more knowledgeable than him in the things of the kingdom. Now someone say, what do you mean? Somebody who wrote that, you see, somebody who wrote more than, uh, or someone who wrote to third of the New Testament, you're more knowledgeable than him. Hey, listen, listen. He wrote what he received from the Lord at that time. And the funny thing is the Lord have not finished speaking. Now imagine how many years or centuries ago an Apostle Paul died. So Apostle Paul is not in heaven. He's sleeping somewhere. And it, what that means is he's not with the Lord. So whatever knowledge he died with, he remains at that level of knowledge. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Every, <laughs> there is, you see, <laughs> okay, thank you, Lord. Now, there's something the Lord told me. How am I saying this? Praise God. Now, there's something the Lord told me one time. He said, this is where you get knowledge. If you don't get knowledge here, whatever knowledge you gather here, is what you will be stuck with if you leave this room. And your interpretation of everything. Now, this is what happens to a lot of people who, who share with you visions they had about heaven and things like that. If you are careful, I, I use, look, listen to them carefully and listen to their speech or um, what, what um, the Greek calls so, so, uh, wisdom, kind of wisdom, you know. There's Sophia and then there's... Um, um, there's a Hebrew word, there's a Greek word for that. It's more like knowledge or the way somebody understands something. Now, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's, a, it's an S word, sunesis or sunesis or something like that. Now, it means your understanding of something. If you listen to those people on several other subjects, then you listen to their revelation, the explanation of their revelation, you will see that no matter the amazing visions they had, their explanation would never exceed their level of understanding. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Now, another person who has more understanding or more knowledge will see the same thing this person saw and explain it completely differently from the way they ex this other person explained it. Now, what they saw is the same, but now their explanation is now um, influenced by the level, their level of reasoning. This is the truth for every vision. This is the truth for every vision. For example, John in the book of Revelation was describing things, creatures he saw that had metal wings. See that now? Now, if you are stuck with his narration, you will be wondering what kind of creatures are these. But now our level of exposure, our level of knowledge and understanding have increased. So you look at what John said and you can easily say, oh, John was seeing some kind of fighter jets. John was seeing some kind of plane. Planes are made with metal. Today, that's what we know. Today, you can't start thinking or imagining a, a grasshopper with metal wings. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, now there is a truth that even today, what you call aircraft might change in the next few years. The build-up of it and all that. It might change in the next few years. Now, what happens? Our level of knowledge will increase. Then we'll look at that same um, description and call it something else. You see that now? That's what I'm saying. So when, when I said that thing in my heart, that it's amazing that the day we meet Paul, we might realize that we are more knowledgeable than him in the things of the Spirit. More knowledgeable in the sense that we have more exposure, more understanding of him in the realm of the spirit. But this is the mistake the church makes. We, many, many believers make this mistake. Apostle Paul had become the standard, but he's not supposed to be the standard. 
Oh, Peter had become the standard. But he was not supposed to be the standard. These were men who received a portion of revelation from God. The question is, and that this connects with where what I was talking about, our destination, where are we going? The question is, are we today receiving revelations from God just like Paul received from him? There has been no cap placed. And it's the same thing we do. We bring it down from Paul. We now look at men today. So we look at great men of God like um, Kenneth Hagin that have gone, you know, that have left us. Kenneth Hagin, A.W. Kenyo. And we look at all those great people. And then we feel these men carried revelation. Yes, in their generation they did. Now, we have learned from them. But what have we received from the Lord based on the knowledge that we have received from them? We are supposed to do better than they did. Now say, how does this connect to entering into God's rest? That's just the truth. Entering God's rest simply means walking in the light of everything God planned for us in the way that he planned it for us. But we will never enter into his rest if we are stuck with people and their knowledge that did not enter that rest. Did you hear me? We will never enter that rest if we are stuck with the knowledge of people who did their best but did not enter the rest. So what is the rest? I told you the rest is living in the life that God ordained for you to live in the very way that he ordained for you to live. And I'll tell you this truth. I told you sometime last week, this rest, it is only God that can take you by the hand and lead you right into it. There is nobody that can bring you into rest. No preacher can pray you into God's rest. No. It is one thing that only you can by your faith, understanding and revelation with God, walk right into it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to be showing you tomorrow some people that kind of entered that rest. And you'll be amazed because, hey, God says he's taking us into that rest. And you better believe him. Praise God. My time is up for today. Now, I know this week is going to be a great week. So don't miss any of the broadcasts today, this week. As you've listened to today's one, get ready. If you've not liked our YouTube channel, I'll employ you to subscribe to it and then set the notification so that once the message comes up, you will be among the first to receive it. Praise God. God bless you. Have a fantastic day today. Bye.